So welcome to the last part of the lecture 11. So, so far what we've done is we've seen that uh, given a linear map, and once we've fixed some bases, we can associate to those linear maps a matrix. Now, what we've also seen in previous parts is that we can do, or in previous lectures is, given linear maps, we can combine them to make new linear maps. So what we wanna do is kind of understand how these two operations interact with each other. Okay, so here's kind of the setup, right? Is sup suppose that S and T are linear maps from V to W, and we have some sort of scalar F. So one thing that we know is we can make the sum of these two guys, right? So we can make we can make the sum of these two operators. So we get a new operator. So this guy here should have a, a matrix associated to it. And the question is, how does this matrix here is connected to the matrix of the oper uh, linear map S and the matrix of the linear map T? And as you might guess, it's the sum of the two matrices, right? So just to kind of highlight what I've done here is this is the matrix of the linear map S plus T, which is in VW. This is something we proved exists inside of this set over here. And over here, what we're doing is the sum of the matrices of S and T. So you can either first form the sum of the two maps and then take the matrix, or you can take individual uh, matrices for each part and then add them together and you get the connection. And as you might guess, something similar happens when you do a scalar multiple. So the matrix of lambda S is the same thing as taking the matrix of S and then multiplying it by our scalar lambda. Right, so let me write this out. So over here, this is the scalar multiple of the matrix MS. And this guy right here is, this is the matrix of the linear map uh, lambda S. So we have this connection here, we have uh, matrix operations on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have the operations of the linear maps. Okay, so that's how these two things interact. Okay, and just a little bit of notation since it's going to be kind of useful kind of going throughout the course. Uh, when I write F M to the N, this means all M by N matrices with coefficients in F. And this is something you probably remember from Math 1B03 that this is a vector space where the dimension is M times N, right? And I actually proved this if you took it in uh, Math 1B03 with me. Uh, so we saw this in 1B03. If you didn't, that's okay. All you need to know is really know what the basis is. So recall that a basis is the set of matrices that look like this, B, I, J. And here is row I and column J. And in this spot, you have a one, and then you have a zero everywhere else in the matrix. So let me just put that there. We have a one in spot i, j, and all the other entries are zero, and so there are m times n such matrices. There are m times m such matrices. Now, I'm leaving a lot of details here for you to check, but basically the claim is that this is a basis for this vector space. And if once you check that this is a basis, then the, the fact that the dimension is M times N just falls from the fact that we have M times N such matrices. Okay. Now, one thing that we also learned in Math 1B03 is matrix multiplication. And I'm just gonna make the assumption that you know how to multiply matrices, okay? I am assuming 
you remember how to multiply matrices. If you don't, go back and review this. Pause right now, go back and review this uh, because this is something I'm assuming. But now one thing that you might want to think about is when we define multiplication matrices, it always seemed kind of, might have seemed a little strange, this formula. Like where, where did this particular formula come from? And the reason this formula might look a little weird is because of the following theorem. So if T is a linear map from U to V and S is a linear map from V to W, then we know that ST, right, this is ST is a linear map inside of U to W, right? Because we can take things in T, we're doing composition. So we take something in U, plug it into T, we get something in V, and then we can plug it into S to get something in W. And so we're looking at the map, the matrix associated with this composition. So this is the, the matrix of this, okay? So the composition. This is the matrix of the composition. And what you would expect is that this will come from matrix multiplication, right? So this is the product of the two corresponding matrices, okay? So I really want to kind of stop here and kind of stress something is if you ever wondered why the definition of matrix multiplication is as it is, the, the reason behind it is because of this particular theorem. Because you have T and S, and from what I said before is you can associate to them with a matrix. So you would have this matrix MS and you'd have this matrix MT. And on the other hand, you have T and S and you can form their composition. You take the composition of them and you get a matrix. So you can take S and T, make a new matrix and you can do the composition. And on the other hand, you have your MS and your MT. So the reason matrix multiplication is defined the way it is, okay, why this is defined in terms of taking row, the first row and matching it with the first column and so on, is so that we can get this definition to agree, so that these two things are the same thing. So I think I've written that over here, right? The definition of matrix multiplication comes from this result. We've defined matrix multiplication so that this is true. Okay, so we define matrix multiplication so that this result is true. There could have been many different ways that we defined the, the multiplication of two matrices. Part of the reason that we define it the way that we do is so that we can have this equality here. So first take the composition and then the matrix. It's the same thing as first taking the matrices and then combining them together, them using the matrix multiplication. The other thing that you want to notice is, uh, oh, let me go back here, is you may be wondering like, well, why is this product even defined, right? Because you know that you can't just arbitrarily multiply two different matrices together. There has to be some restriction on it. And it's namely that the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. And so we should check that that's true. And actually it is true in this case, right? So this product is defined. And why is that? Well, if the dimension of U is n and the dimension of v is p and the dimension of w is q then let's look at all what the sizes of our matrices are so the dimension of s is going to be q times p oops is q times p and our matrix t according to the definition is going to be p times n so the number of columns of MS is equal to the number of rows of MT. So we have that MS times MT is defined. And in fact, we get is a Q by N matrix.
which is what we would expect. Okay, so there are many key ideas today here. Uh, one of the main ideas that you want to take away today is the matrix associated to a linear map from a vector space V to a vector space W in terms of its bases. And then what you want to remember is that all those operations that you, you looked at in Math 1B3 correspond to operations on linear maps and vice versa. An operation on linear map is somehow telling you something about a matrix operation. So you can keep track of the information of your linear map by looking at the associated matrix. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. I hope you got something out of it, and I will see you in lecture 12. Let's have a great day.